Okay, this will be a video of the tear out of my old natural gas furnace and air conditioner before I put the Mr. Cool in. Alright, before you start any project like this, safety first. Make sure you have everything shut off to your furnace if it's gas or electric. Gas furnace is still electric going to them. Um, in this case, my AC gets cut off and I've got a blower fan as well. Um, always make sure everything off. Double, triple check. Um, this is probably, again, one of the most important parts. Don't want to hurt yourself while you're trying to save money. Same thing at your meter. There's usually a uh, disconnect or a shut off. In my case, it's right here. Gas company came and shut it off. So I know this is going to go. Sometimes inside the house, you'll have a shut off as well. But this one, this one here is, again, when it's down, it's, uh, it's shut off. Uh, electrical, shut off the uh, breaker in the breaker box. I want to make sure, double check just in case, uh, unless it's not wired how I thought it's going to be wired. Check to make sure with the voltmeter that my circuit's dead. So I checked uh, all three terminals to ground and neutral and uh, it's dead as a doornail. So this is safe now to kind of work on the electrical and pull all the cabling and conduit and switches off. That's the electrical disconnected here. So at least for my system, power comes down here and then I add later on this switch so I can plug stuff into. So basically, or I'm sorry, this outlet that I can plug stuff into. So basically power comes down here and then goes to this, which I took off this switch which turns on and off the the furnace. So once this is removed and gone, all I gotta do is basically take this out. Um, I gotta deal with the um, remote uh, thermostat wire. So one of these goes up to the, the thermostat and it tells the furnace or HVAC unit to, to be in heating mode or to be in cooling mode when you're in the summer. And then the other one goes out to the uh, outdoor unit or the condenser outside. So I can basically snip these off. I, I think this uh, this will probably need to get replaced too for the fact that I got a, a heat pump and I'm not sure I got enough wires in here to, to um, satisfy the requirement for the thermostat. So I'll probably just snip these off here and then uh, put new wires in for the heat pump. So the gas was one of my primary areas of concern, so what I did is I had the gas company shut off the valve and then basically ran the furnace to try and uh, take out all the residual gas in the line and once that was done I let it sit for about two weeks and then once I let it sit I was able to cut in the pipe here and that's a picture of that and uh, everything will work fine. Okay so with the new Mr. Cool unit uh, being put in this whole this whole uh, base here will rise up about, I don't know, 25, 26 inches. And then uh, this one it won't be able to fit. This um, humidifier won't be able to fit in the final assembly, which is fine by me because I just don't like uh, humidifiers putting uh, water into the ductwork, basically what is a, what a humidifier does. Um, and the other thing is it, it does release a lot. It's a lot of air leaks in here. And so the, I, I got a lot of this taped off, but but again, I just I just don't care for the thing. I haven't used it, so unplugged all the water line, the power, uh, the condensate drain. So that's all going to come off. And again, make sure you shut the water off if you've got a if you've got a uh, humidifier, so it doesn't spray out. So I got to take all this uh, water piping out. Not a big deal, but anyway. So this whole thing's just going to come out again. I don't need the. The humidifier, um, it does retain, uh, at least the theory is, in the winter, um, if you humidify a room, it, it will retain more heat because water can hold heat. But in this case, uh, the household does have some dust mite allergies, and dust mites love to live when it's uh, really humid. And so anyway, um, it's coming out. I'm not going to use it. All right, so here's the inside of the humidifier. It's already starting to scale up here. And then uh, that's the inside of the, the duct ducting or the air handler. All right, so the humidifier has been removed. This is the inside of the 
air handler if you ever wanted to look inside there and so here's my old uh, a coil basically the uh, lower will send air through the inside of this it'll kind of get forced out here and these coils will become cold which then cools the air and also uh, removes the humidity in the uh, in the summer and it works the opposite in the winter these coils will heat up with the heat pump and then air is forced through them and then that then heats the air and so the air then rises up here from the ductwork and then goes into the plenum here uh, one end, <coughs> excuse me one end goes down this way I got a little six inch duct that feeds a room here and then the other See up here the rest of the air will go down this way to feed the rest of the house so that's basically it so I gotta take all these these walls off here and uh, install the new uh, air handler Mr. Cool air handler do some minor duct work and that should um, be the extent of what I gotta do here so again I don't like the fact that you know the the dehumidifier will cause a little bit of rusting here, if you can see on the, the intake here, or the outtake or outlet, whatever you want to call it here. I don't like that, and that's why I want to get rid of it, so it's just going to be a non-humidity controlled house. Um, if I want to buy a separate dehumidifier, I can do that. If I want to dehumidifier or humidify any room, but I really haven't had the need for it in the winter. It, you get a little bit more static electricity, but um, again, I just don't like the thought of spraying. Uh, vaporized water into a ductwork. Okay, so this is the air handler with the uh, cover plate here removed. My refrigerant lines come in here and then you get attached to your A coil here. As you can see, this thing is pretty much rotted out. Um, it's again overdue for a replacement. So all this will again come off and I'm gonna have to redo. All this duct work I should have like four or five inches after I put the new unit in I'll make some custom duct work so again this whole furnace will come out and the new one ideally after I'm done will slide in all right so this is with the tire plate off I had to cut off this uh, little piece of uh, ducting here with some uh, tin snips another thing get one of these worth their weight in gold I'll put the link in the description below um, again and use a good set of uh, gloves so you don't cut yourself because HVAC metal um, is sharp. Anyway, so I've got all these uh, refrigerant lines free from the, the ducting. And so I'll pull this A-coil out and then uh, remove the refrigerant and put the, uh, the new heat pump in. A-coil out. This is the inside of the furnace. Blower motor sits down there, blows the air across the uh, heat exchanger here, basically heat exchanger where the uh, natural gas is lit and heats up the, well, the heat exchanger and then uh, no hot air then gets blown up into the, the ductwork which we kind of already shown. So now this is probably the most tedious part is pulling all this ductwork off and then all right, so this is the A-coil removed. Um, the high pressure line, low pressure line for the refrigerant, as you can see, this is pretty much ate up. I mean, it's worked good for 21 years, but again, it's just, it's just ate up. And you can see the rust is starting to kind of form in the condensate tray, but the, the fins themselves, everything looks pretty good. It's not dirty or, you know, well taken care of, the filter is always changed or cleaned, and again, it's basic HVAC maintenance to keep your system running for a long time. And so, a little upfront provides a lot of relief in the long run, but in this case, um, there's probably some leaks here um, inside the the pipettes or tubing, whatever you want to call these things. Um, and at, at this point, I'm willing to get off a of natural gas, so it just makes sense to go to a heat pump. And being the fact that uh, natural gas prices are going to start shooting through the roof here pretty soon due to the coronavirus uh, pandemic um, and the lack of supply of gas. So anyway, so this is the A-coil. Again, 
21 years. It's uh, it, it served me well. So, bye bye, old friend. Maybe I'll repurpose this as a heat exchanger for hot water or one of my other projects. After pulling uh, the thermostat wire out from the furnace here, it looks like I'm in luck. I don't have to change the one on the thermostat. I believe this is a five wire system. Uh, it's got five wires. The blue one wasn't used based on the only need for four wires. So I don't got to route um, the wiring up to the thermostat with a new cable that I bought. But the outdoor condenser unit only has three wires. Um, so these two and then this green one. And unfortunately, uh, the outdoor condenser has got a uh, heat pump in it, obviously. And so it needs more signaling wire to determine if it's in heating mode or cooling mode. And so I'll need to string uh, new wiring out to that. But that's somewhat good news. Uh, I don't have to fish up thermostat wired through the walls and just use the existing the existing cable here so um, anyway pulled off most of the duct work this is probably the biggest pain in the ass is it's been in there for 20 some odd years um, had to pull back the the bends and use some shears to do some cutting here because it just wouldn't come loose but other than that um, looks like it's all ready to pull out and it's pretty much all the duct work has been disconnected. Uh, this is the wire to the humidity sensor. That'll probably come out too. Um, anyway, so let me take you around to the front here. So I got the electrical wire pulled out. Duct work is all taken apart here. Probably see up in here. This can all be, uh, should be able to pull it right out. Kind of notice it got, it looks like a little bit of mold growing here, so I might want to put a UV light in. Um, but anyway, that's one of the reasons I don't like that humidity thing because it potentially adds water. Anytime you have water, you're going to get mold. But anyway, so now this thing should be uh, able to be. Pulled out. And that's it. Probably spent a good, oh, I don't know, what time is it now? One o'clock. Probably spent a good hour disassembling everything and trying to figure out how it got put together so I can pull it out. So now I'm going to get a dolly and pull the bad boy out. Boom, bada bang. All right, so now we'll put the stand in, do some measurements, do some cutting of the sheet metal here, and then we'll start working on it. Here's the side view of the furnace, uh, completely removed. So again, the Mr. Cool heat pump requires air to come up through the bottom. And the problem with mine is the air kind of comes up through the side so I had to make a little frame to force the air to come up to the bottom so on the left here you can see that's the access to the plenum which I'll be putting in the Mr. Cool heat pump into again the most important thing is to practice safety first so make sure your electric and gas are all off and once that's done you can uh, rip your furnace out. A lot of the stuff is based on, you know, planning and figuring out what you need. That's where most of the time is kind of invested when you're pulling this out. Anyway, please like and subscribe and I'll put the next series of videos out of installation of the indoor unit and the outdoor unit.